broad swath of patients have atrial fibrillation, including a sizable number who end up requiring transcatheter aortic valve replacement. Here at uh, AHA 2015 in Orlando, one paper looked at national variations in post-TAVR antithrombotic therapy utilization in patients with atrial fibrillation. We have insights from the STS-ACC TVT registry. So I'm with Dr. Matthew Sherwood, uh, medical instructor at Durham VA Medical Center and uh, structural interventional fellow at Duke University Medical Center. So some basics first, why did you do this particular analysis? We had looked at both the non-AFib patients and patients with atrial fibrillation because right now the current guidelines recommend that patients who undergo TAVR get three months, one to six months, but three months usually of dual antiplatelet therapy if they don't have atrial fibrillation. If they do have atrial fibrillation, that they likely receive an oral anticoagulant because all the patients are high risk via our traditional scores, um, and that they also receive maybe antiplatelet monotherapy. They recommend against any prolonged use of dual antiplatelet therapy in this high risk group. However, that guideline is based upon zero efficacy data. There's no clinical randomized data. There's not even really observational data that tells us that dual antiplatelet therapy in non-AFib patients, nor the combination of oral anticoagulant coagulant therapy or antiplatelet therapy works for our AFib patients. So this is one of those areas where big data can come in big, big handy. I, I agree completely. We have, thankfully, in the realm of TAVR, a national registry that comprises, you know, probably greater than 99% of the commercial cases that are done in the United States. So we actually have the data to look at our full experience in this country and try to answer this question. So what did you find when you looked? So it was interesting, when we looked at atrial fibrillation patients versus non-atrial fibrillation patients, we found that they actually had, even after adjustment for clinical risk factors and for hospital level clustering, AFib patients had a nearly two-fold increase in the risk for mortality at one year. They also had a one-and-a-half-fold increase in the risk for bleeding. What was interesting is we didn't find a big difference in their risk for stroke, uh, which is probably counter to all of the previous literature and what we're thinking. The next thing we looked at was what's the variation in the use of oral anticoagulation therapy in these high-risk patients when they go home after their TAMR. And what was really interesting is that in only half of the patients, 53% of the patients with AFib who underwent TAVR were discharged on oral anticoagulation therapy. Um, of the patients that weren't discharged on oral anticoagulation therapy, 61% of them were discharged on dual antiplatelet therapy. Um, so it's really interesting to see how physicians are reacting, honestly, in these high-risk patients who have both high thrombotic and high bleeding risk as they undergo TAVR, um, how physicians are reacting and what they think is the best thing for patients, because we really don't know based on any evidence. So what is your takeaway from this? Well, we then looked at clinical outcomes and we said, you know, are clinical outcomes better? in patients who receive oral anticoagulation. And again, we adjusted for clinical risk factors and hospital level variables. And you know, what was surprising is we found there wasn't a significant benefit for oral anticoagulation therapy in terms of mortality, stroke, or bleeding. But the amount of variation that there is in the system, how much variation there is in the use of oral anticoagulant and then I played it, I think really kind of shades the issue we don't know what the best therapy is and that all kinds of combinations of therapies are being used. So what we really thought was important was to highlight the fact that atrial fibrillation patients are at increased and extreme risk for bad outcomes after TAVR, and we need further research, including randomized clinical trials, to define the best antithrombotic therapy after TAVR in patients with AFib. Now, shortly before AHA, we were at TCT, and one last-minute addition was an entire press conference based not on data presented at the meeting, but rather in response to a paper published online the previous week in the New England Journal of Medicine. In brief, blood clots may complicate aortic valve replacement, previously thought not to require the use of blood thinners. And this was Macker et al. And one of the things that seemed to suggest when you look at it in view of your paper is, does this like further support the idea that maybe take a look at these patients and see if they are on oral anticoagulation at discharge, maybe there could be some benefit, particularly if what they're finding in, in, by Macker et al. is true. I think actually it does support the use at least of oral anticoagulation therapy in TAVR patients with AFib. The question it really raises is, should all patients who undergo TAVR or get a bioprosthetic valve of this nature be on oral anticoagulation therapy to prevent uh, bioprosthetic valve thrombosis? Again, given the limited amount of findings so far, we don't know the clinical impact of bioprosthetic valve thrombosis, but I would imagine it can't be good. It can't be good that your valve has a large thrombus on it, that a leaflet might be trapped by it, that you have an increased risk for embolic stroke. And so 
Um, while we don't know the absolute answer yet, you know, I would think that at least seeing this more and more and getting more data on it will further increase, you know, physicians' awareness and, you know, the drive to put patients on oral anticoagulation therapy, especially if they have an indication like atrial fibrillation. Given the variation that you're seeing, is it likely that there'll be a, a randomized clinical trial? So it's interesting, in the non-AFib patients, the, the uh, Janssen group is starting a randomized clinical trial of dual antiplatelet therapy versus the oral anticoagulant rivaroxaban for patients who undergo TAVR. And that's an interesting trial because that is actually taking all of the antiplatelet therapy out and just using an oral anticoagulant. That, that trial is just about to start, and I think it'll be years before we see the answer, right. but that's a, that's a provocative trial. I think what we also need is a trial for our atrial fibrillation patients. It's half of the population. Right. They're at extreme risk for a lot of um, poor clinical events. So we should be looking at that just as hard and trying to figure out what perhaps combination of oral anticoagulation and antiplatelet therapy would work best. Well, we have a variety of something like 19 NCTR or other registries uh, that are being presented here at AHA 2015. So look around in CardioSource World News and CardioSource World News Interventions for some reason for uh, all of these various trials. For those two publications, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire. <laughs>